I love whales. They're neat, blubbery behemoths of the bottom depths that are super smart. They evolved in a geologically short amount of time and have diversified into all sorts of weird shapes and sizes. Being mammals, many have evolved tusks, or tusk-like teeth, that break up their silhouettes beyond round, chubby torpedo. A brand new one of these toothy sea squishies has just been described. Let's meet Nihohae. The big flappy milk sacs living in today's oceans are quite diverse. These warm-blooded, salt-blowing, fish-and-ship-sucking mammals are the largest animals with us today and come in a surprising level of diversity. I say surprising because there used to be way more choices in how to whale in the distant past. Ways to whale that are way cooler than today's way to whale. But whatever, this is just how the whale be. The baleen whales are neat because they have baleen, but that's about it. They have some differences in how they go about gulping huge amounts of water and separating the good soup from the bad brine, but they are all soup sifters. The toothed whales, on the other hand, members of the Odontoceti, are way more interesting in the list of ways they killed their victims. Their diversity in today's boiling sewage runoff is quite high, with the enormous boat-headed squid-sucking sperm whales that dive well below the five bloody smears left from the titan's laughable failure on one end of the spectrum and small, snipe-snouted, slippery-skinned raptorial dolphins on the other. Over the course of the evolution of the toothed whales, a whole bunch of different kinds of teeth and jaws have evolved. Extreme amounts of teeth, or polydonty, only one set of teeth, or monophyodonty, homodonty, or teeth of the same shape, and heterodonty, or teeth of varying shapes. Even tusks have evolved in the whales. Tusks are, aside from that 2014 Kevin Smith movie, big old toofers that stick out of the mouths of mammals. They're made up of either incisor or canine teeth and are defined not by where they are in the mouth, but due to their size as well as composition and structure. Tusks can be in the upper jaw or lower jaw, but they have to protrude outside the mouth. In a more direct definition, tusks are continuously growing hypsilodont teeth with no root. The continuous growth is due to a bed of epithelial stem cells at the base of the tooth, continuously producing more dental tissues. The constant growth enables compensation for wear, abrasion, and trauma, which can be common in tusked species. Tusks have oddly never evolved in any other groups of tetrapods except for mammals, as well as the synapsid dicynodonts of the Permian and Triassic periods. Yes, some animals have evolved enormous fangs that are almost like tusks, but they don't function like tusks, nor do they have the same structure. In today's blubber buddies, true tusks are most famously found in the narwhal, Monodon monoceros. Their special tufers are the most bizarre tusk known among modern mammals in being an ever-growing, spiral-shaped left canine that can reach 3.95 to 5.5 meters or 13 to 18 feet. As you can imagine, trying to see what the hell these weird whales use their face swords for is difficult, and hypotheses about their use abound. Disturbing prey, piercing prey, making ice breathy holes, defense against meanies, and for sexy time dances. Potentially weirder, or at least as weird, tusks can be found in the strap toothed whales, but at this point we're getting off topic. When one takes a quick gander at the toothed whale fossil record, one will find tusk-like structures in many of them, like Otakaikia, Kentriodon, Ankyloriza, Squalodon, and Otobinocetops, all of which also show you just how many different ways these sea squishies can adapt their toofers. This brings us to the newest member of the Messed Up Chompers Club, Described and published by Ombre Cost, R. Ewan Fordyce, and Carolina Locke in the Royal Society Publishing's Proceedings B in June of 2023. They describe the specimen OU22397, which is a nearly complete noggin, only missing some bits, plus the periotics, bullae, and stapes of the ears and the right jaw. 42 teeth and a bit of atlas vertebra, a bit of axis vertebra, two neck or back and two tail vertebrae, and some ribs. This specimen was collected in 1998 by R. E. Fordyce, A. Grebneff, S. Wilson, and R. D. Fordyce from a fallen block below the northwest face of island cliff Tokarahi, Awamoko Valley, in North Otago, New Zealand. 
It was preserved in yellow-green, highly glauconitic sandy limestone with sparse invertebrates and indistinct bedding from the contact between the Kokoamu green sand and Otekaike limestone. The lithology, or rock type, is similar to that of a bone-rich shell bed, also known as the lentipectin pavement, which has produced Carcharodon angustidens, Megalampris kizai, and Tokarahia kaueroa, and which was dated using foraminifera and strontium isotopes as being 25.2 million years old, Upper Dontrunian Age. The team decided to name the beast Nihohae Matakoi. The genus comes from the Maori language with niho for teeth and hae for slashing, in reference to possible use of the teeth. The species name also comes from the Maori language with mata for face or point and koi for sharp in reference to the long, flat, and thin snoot ending in pointed sharp teeth. You can see why they gave this critter this name. Nihohae had a general skull shape similar to modern whales and many fossil whales, but it had an extremely long snout. Not super skinny like some fish snagging whales, but thinner than many. It's the dentition that makes it stand out the most. It was heterodont, meaning it had a bunch of different shapes of teeth in varying sizes. The backmost teeth were thick and almost molar-like, but still largely blade-shaped. The teeth after those were more clearly made for cutting and slicing, basically shaped like shark teeth. After these teeth, you get to the really weird ones. The tooth sockets and the teeth in those sockets get really big, railroad spike-like in shape, and they bend outwards and forwards, resulting in a flytrap-looking mouth, or something you'd see in some bizarre marine reptile from the Triassic period. The teeth at the very tip of the mouth were parallel to the tooth socket and the snout, so they literally just stuck out forward. Before we get into what this critter was, what it was doing, and how it lived, let's bring in Mr. Man from Animal Planet's The Most Extreme to get a better idea of how it sizes up with the worst apes to walk the Earth. The skull of Niho Hae is 56 centimeters, 22.1 inches in length. Some outside of the author team have extrapolated a total body length of Niho Hae at around 6 feet or almost 2 meters, making it similar in size to many modern dolphins. Thanks, Mr. Man. Since the discovery of Nihohae, it has been suggested to belong to the family Waipatiidae, which has traditionally only had Waipatia in it. That makes this little blubber beast a dolphin, technically of the freshwater variety. However, Otekaikia, Papahu, Microceratus ambiguus, Microceratus sharkovi, Sachalinocetus, Colmacus, and Sulacocetus dagestanicus have been suggested to also belong to Waipatiidae. When the research team tallied up all the anatomical traits of Niho Hae and put them in the phylogenetic software along with all the other dolphins informally referred to as Waipatiids plus some other whales, they found that they really did all group together naturally. So the team suggests that the new Waipatiidae should include Waipatia, Otekaikia, Awamokoa, Urkudelphus, and Edicetus, as well as Niho Hae. They did make sure to state that there should be further analysis and description of the family and all of the members of it in a phylogenetic framework to better describe them all taxonomically. In the Nihohae analysis, it was found that this group was an early diverging group to most other toothed whales. The presence of true tusks and of tusk-like teeth was mapped onto the phylogeny proposed here with Nihohae. The disparity and repeated occurrence of procumbent teeth suggest this tooth form has evolved multiple times. At least once in early toothed whales, including Ankyloriza, Squalodontids, and Wipatiids, in Ziphiids, and again in Delphinidins. Tusk-like teeth and Wipatiids tend to be incisors, vary in number, be longer than wide, and mostly straight. A thorough analysis of the variation in tooth shape and size in Wapatiids and Squalodontids may provide clarity with regards to the definition of tusk-like teeth, showing how these teeth should be classified. In Ziphiids, the beaked whales, tusk-like teeth are variable in form, shape, and size, and include incisors and post-canines. All extraoral teeth are present in the mandible. In delphinoids, kentriodontids have convergently evolved procumbent tusk-like teeth similar to those in Waipatiids and Nihohae, as well as evolving true tusks in Monodontidae and Odobinocetopsidae. 
The presumed convergent and repeated evolution of procumbent extraoral tusk or tusk-like teeth in toothed whales suggest these teeth were subject to functional demands, which could explain their repeated appearance in disparate groups. They were not, nor are, just for show. The skull anatomy of Nihohae provides insight into the inferred feeding behaviors of the species due to the excellent preservation of skull and jaws. Its snout was 66% of the skull length, which is a similar ratio to river dolphins or the snouts of the gavialid crocodilians. However, compared to these other long-snouted animals, Nihohae's snoot was flattened from top to bottom, which is more similar to what is seen in the snoots of the extinct river dolphins Zoracus and Potamodelphus, which is more hydrodynamic when swung side to side. However, Nihohae is different here again because of its lower jaw, which matches its snoot in length and size, and is associated with a reduced ability to apply strong front bite forces and to twist or shake prey items. Though long-snooted animals can apply significant bite forces in the less used back section of their mouths, these forces are reduced near the front of the mouth, suggesting the consumption of smaller prey which does not require significant tearing for consumption. Nihohae was a polyodont, heterodont, and presumed monophyodont odontocete whose dentition was unique and unlike those of living whales. The closest living analogues of this feeding apparatus can be observed in sawfish and saw sharks, which have long, flattened snouts with teeth-like spines lining the edges. Recent studies show evidence that sawfish and saw sharks use their saw to slash prey items in order to injure or kill. Billfish, such as Xiphius gladius, do not have teeth along their snout, which is similar to the posterior two-thirds of the Nihohae snout, and use their bill to stun or injure prey using sideways strikes. It has also been suggested that billfish use their specialized snout for defense and to fend off predators. Another thing of note is that the frontmost tusk-like teeth of Nihohae don't show a lot of wear. If it was using its teeth to muck around in the mud for prey, you'd see wear and tear. If it were using those teeth for prey processing, you'd see wear and tear. The teeth are also just not robust enough to tear apart big prey items. The unfused neck bones in Nihohae and other early toothed whales would have allowed a broader range of neck movements, including sideways, up and down, and all around. Unfused neck vertebrae and increased range in neck motion is also observed in living toothed whales such as Delphinapterus lucus, the beluga, Monodon monoceros, the narwhal, and in river dolphins. The length of the snout and jaw suggests that Nihohae was able to snap its jaws rapidly to catch prey. However, the tusk-like incisors lay too flat relative to each other to be able to pierce or grasp slash trap prey. This suggests the teeth would not have been used to grasp prey as has been proposed for Furcacetus flexirostrum, Phoborodon arcturostris, or Wipatia merewenua. Similarly, the flat orientation of frontmost teeth suggests that they were not used as a fish trap as proposed for some pterosaurs like Rampharynchus and Dorignathus. And for plesiosaurs with a rosette of longer procumbent front teeth, hypothesized to be used as a filter for sifting soft-bodied invertebrates from the bottom silt. Therefore, the researchers hypothesized that Nihohae was swinging its basket of daggers around schools of small animals like fish to stun them and then shred them with their back teeth. A raptorial feeder which consumed its prey after limited shearing or chewing. The absence of wear or pits slash scratch marks on the enamel surface suggests it is unlikely that the teeth were used for sifting through or moving substrate to find prey. If teeth were in contact with abrasive material, this would leave marks as those seen on the tusk-like teeth of other toothed whales. The delicate nature of the tusk-like teeth in Nihohae suggests they were not used for intraspecific combat or for fending off predators. This would require robust teeth such as those observed in Ankyloriza, Ziphiids, or walruses. Such uses would probably result in prominent fractures without reinforced teeth.
The functional implications of the unusual feeding apparatus of this critter, particularly the use and functions of the procumbent, tusk-like teeth, deserve further investigation with the use of finite element modeling and analysis. Further study of contemporary species and description of other tusked odontocetes will shed light on the function and evolution of tusk-like teeth in whales. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, like this video, drop a comment in the comment section below, and hit the bell icon to stay in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching.